I'm Bill Spencer from the Mariculture Evolution Group. Our group has invented a variety of technologies for deep ocean fish farming, which is also called mariculture. Now, let me tell you why these inventions open up a new beginning in environmentally responsible food production. Remember the world famous underwater explorer Jacques Cousteau? He wrote in 1983, we must plant the sea as farmers. Civilization is all about farming, replacing hunting. Think about that for a second. The last wild cow was hunted down in Poland in the late 19th century. Well, it's been 40 years since Jacques Cousteau arrived at this conclusion. We haven't done a very good job though of following his advice. Since then, things have gotten much worse when it comes to protecting our ocean environment. The question I've been asked to address is how do we reduce greenhouse gas emissions from fish farming in the open ocean? The question should really be, how do we feed 10 billion people sustainably, efficiently, and responsibly? The good news is that recent research shows that fish farming can reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 3.6% of the 12% needed by 2030. That's almost a 30% contribution to the goal. Here are a couple of scary facts about the current impact of global food production on the environment. 40% of all land use is devoted to agriculture. 30% of greenhouse gas emissions come from farming. And 70% of fresh water goes to agriculture. Now let's look at some scary facts about what has happened to our oceans from hunting seafood. And keep in mind that only six to 7% of the protein consumed in the whole world is seafood. Yet 53% of all fish species are fully exploited. 32% are overexploited and 85% of our oceans are at their limits. Would it surprise you to know that half of the seafood on that delicious sushi platter is farmed? Well, you always hear people say, I prefer wild caught to farm seafood. Well, today, more than half of all seafood consumed in the world is farmed. And that means half of the seafood on that plate of sushi. Now we've all heard since elementary school that 70% of the earth's surface is covered by water, the ocean, right? Well, our oceans are vast and there's plenty of room for fish farming. The Pacific Ocean is 64 million square miles. The Atlantic is 41 million square miles. So that's a total of 104 million square miles of ocean. To put this in perspective, there are only 10.5 million square miles of arable land in the whole world. Here's the kicker though. Our oceans have an average depth of 10,000 feet compared to land. So our earth is really 90% ocean and 10% usable land. The importance of this is that it gives fish farmers three dimensions to farm in. And this is a huge value to the amount of seafood that can be produced in very small footprints. The wild caught fish industry is fraught with problems from its human impact to the effect on the environment. Being a fisherman is the most dangerous of all occupations. 121 deaths per 100,000 workers, the next most dangerous being logging. Being a fisherman in many countries also involves indentured servitude. We all know that hunting seafood is destructive to the ocean and contributes to greenhouse gases. The industry perpetuates this behavior, among other reasons, because it's invisible in those incomparably vast oceans. This is a pursainer. Most tuna are hunted by pursainers. It's a type of boat that uses a helicopter to spot a school of tuna, then encircles that tuna with a 60 mile long net. The tuna are then transferred to a processing ship, flash frozen and taken to their destination. Aside from the environmental damage, hunting seafood is extracted and does not replenish what's taken, unlike forestry and other types of agriculture. In many cases, bycatch 
which are fish not being targeted, make up as much as 20 to 25% of a typical haul. And the bycatch is just thrown back into the ocean, dead. This is just one day at the Tsukiji tuna auction in Tokyo. Warehouse upon warehouse filled with hunted tuna prized for sushi and sashimi. So let's think about seafood consumption. Americans consume 19.2 pounds of seafood per person annually. A lot of seafood, right? Not right. Japanese and Chileans consume more than 150 pounds of seafood per person annually. Taiwan, 144. South Korea, 124. Malaysia, 118. And China consumes 75 pounds per person, and that amount is growing quickly. China produces by capture or farming almost two thirds of the world's seafood supply for internal consumption or export. They are a major global commercial fishing force that is not above skirting the laws of the sea. Almost half of all farm shrimp comes from Asia, produced on unsustainable land-based farms. This farm in Malaysia was so large they had their own car dealership. The farm, however, was not economically sustainable and eventually closed down. Hunting seafood is the tragedy of the commons. Every country has an exclusive economic zone that extends 200 miles from their coastline, protecting their fishery. Sadly, despite universally accepted rules, China fishes in exclusive economic zones of many countries defying their unsophisticated Coast Guards. You'll hear that one of the biggest concerns about fish farming is finding a sustainable source of feed. Currently, fish feed is a combination of fish oil, soy, and bait fish like sardines and anchovies. Now keep in mind as we go through this that food conversion in farmed animals is also energy conversion. Let me give you a little known fact to illustrate this about wild seafood. We've known since we were children that wild fish eat fish that eat fish that eat fish all the way down the food chain. The most valuable wild predator fish must directly eat 100 pounds of bait fish for every pound of growth. But here's the kicker. The actual food conversion ratio is a thousand to one. That's a thousand pounds of bait fish to one pound of growth. When you take into count the 900 pounds of bait fish eaten by the 100 pounds of fish that the top predator just ate. So what do bait fish eat? Well, they eat algae, of course. So fish protein basically comes from algal protein. Today, farm seafood is produced with almost two to one ratio of feed to growth. Evidence indicates that raising fish on a mobile platform in deep ocean helps fish achieve a one-to-one -one food conversion ratio, prevents parasites, and disperses effluent widely rather than at a set location. Sustainable sources of feed based on algal protein and oils will soon replace fish meal. Think about it. Algae absorb CO2 and can produce the same amount of protein in a year as 21 acres of soy and 49 acres of corn in a much smaller footprint. And remember, fish don't need fresh water. To achieve a new level of efficiency and environmental responsibility in fish farming, I contend this effort needs to be moved into deeper ocean away from shorelines. This requires a hard look at regulations that need to encourage deep ocean mariculture and support coastal communities that will benefit from the economic potential of shifting from fishing to farming. Harder will be convincing the commercial fishing industry to pivot to farming rather than continuing to hunt for seafood and deplete our oceans. Our group holds several patents on technologies that can help fast track mariculture. We call our main innovation, the Wanderer. It's an automated, remote controlled mobile platform for deep ocean mariculture. 
Now to produce 5,000 tons of protein on land would require 20,000 cows, 80,000 pigs, or 6 million chickens. They require 80,000 gallons of water a day and 150 square miles of land to grow their feed. The carbon footprint, when we add 150 square miles of cleared land and the care and fuel for the fleet of farm tractors and trucks is monumental, especially when compared with the tiny footprint of a single four cage wanderer. The cost of moving the wanderer through the water is so low it's insignificant compared with the cost of land-based or nearshore aquaculture operations. We must find a way to feed a world of 10 billion people, and we must do it soon before our world erupts in wars over land and water. The answer lies in fish farming. Mariculture has the potential of not only providing food security for our world, but changing the way food can be produced in a sustainable and responsible manner. Now here's a teaser, a glimpse of the future, something you'll be learning more about self-sustained man-made ocean islands powered by ocean thermal energy where mariculture is the main economic activity. Thank you very much. <laughs>